Linux is one uh, if you define the goal to be basically Linux in every device. Uh, and Linux in the mainstream is a platform which people feel very comfortable using. Google has just acquired some patents, which I don't think is a great idea, but it's something that they uh, seem to think is necessary. I spoke to some managers in Google about it, and they didn't deny the fact that they were just going to buy some patents to defend the so-called, uh, defend the Android platform. They basically posing a threat to some competitors using patents. Um, but it seems as though they find their way to um, to to fight against this cartel comprising companies like Oracle, Apple, and Microsoft, uh, and ensuring that these companies don't use patents uh, uh, to basically build up an arsenal that's going to impose uh, prices upon Linux and make it serve as a cash cow uh, for companies that don't have anything to do with a single line of code in these platforms. Um, of course, one, one last thing I just want to mention very quickly is uh, the Oracle case against Android is kind of falling apart, of course, because uh, uh, Jonathan Schwartz, the, the person who used to be the CEO of Sun, uh, was shown to uh, to basically endorse the use of uh, of the Java clone of sorts in the um, in the Android platform, and actually being very much in favor of the Android platform, which uses a uh, uh, Java VM of sorts. Um, so that's kind of destroying Oracle's case right now, which is which is very good news. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh... Well, I was going to bring up um, a little bit of feedback, uh, which had somebody who emailed me the other day, who was very impressed and very much enjoyed your interview uh, from the previous show um, with Michael. Unfortunately, I can't find that email. I've been desperately clicking it. Uh, clicking around my email files to try and find it, but I will have it for the next show because it was a very nice, uh, very nice email, and I'll, um, I'm sure the person won't buy me. We it out on the show. people listen to the previous show. I think maybe because it was the first one, I believe, which we had that could be considered to be conf- confrontational on on the spot. Usually, a very cooperative and friendly. Uh, uh, I mean, Michael was cooperative, but he obviously didn't hold the same views on certain issues. I, I think that um, makes a good show sometimes, but yeah, and it, and it was all it was all wrapped up in a very uh, polite and pleasant uh, show. So uh, th- this was very much appreciated by the person who wrote, and I just wish I could find it now, but unfortunately, I can't see it at the moment. Yeah, That'll too, be on the too, too show. Up on you, you get all the emails <laughs> for the show because you're on the uh, host. Well, I I get uh, it's, it's strange how the the feedback comes to me. I occasionally, if if it's in praise of you. I tend to get it. Um, if it's slagging me off, or if it's uh, if it's insulting me, I'll get it. And if it's praising you, I'll also get it. Um, I've had quite a few emails, but like I said, I've moved them into a folder. I will for the next show. We'll have a little feedback section at the end because uh, I'll read out some of them. Yeah. I'm sure the people won't mind. Um, another very little quick bit of feedback. Um, I had a Windows Phone Seven advocate uh, defending his platform, and uh, apparently, according to him, the reason for the poor Windows Phone Seven sales isn't because of uh, lack of features or anything like that. It's because of the sales reps. So I think we have a new excuse to add to our Microsoft Are you sure it's new list. one? I, that goes back to around June, I think. I think that was the talking point. It was started with one of the writers in IDG, which was then joined by Mary Jo Foley, uh, mentioning the same story. It's about, oh, I was trying to get Windows Phone, and the guy who sold me the phone wasn't too nice to me. Yeah. was trying to yeah. sell me. That was, that, that was, the old, yeah, that was the, uh, all kind of, all, let's all sing in harmony, same excuses. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, we had a site, um, there was a site called Windows Telltale or Tattletale or something, which was defending this alleged uh, sales rips which were being hired on Windows Phone 7. I spoke to the gentleman via email who owned this site and asked him on the show, and he actually did agree, but he hasn't yet got back to me with times of availability, so we're still waiting on that one. So if he is listening to this, I'd be very interested in him giving us a few times so he can come on and tell us what's great about Windows Phone 7. Another quite interesting thing with this, this particular discussion, and people can see this if they're particularly interested, it's on my Twitter feed uh, in my um, reply section, so you can actually have a look at the conversation between me and uh, the gentleman in question who was, who's called Michael, um, who's under the handle news chain. Um, he 
wasn't very clear on what he was at the very beginning, and um, he was obviously promoting Windows Phone 7. The conversation moved back and forth between certain advantages and disadvantages, uh, him producing the former, I'm producing the latter. And uh, a couple of points that he made is, uh, let's make this very clear, Windows Phone 7 does not support tethering on any mobile phone. Uh, he said, suggested, and you can see this for yourself on the conversation, that uh, it does. Well, that, that's very incorrect. It's, there is a hack for Samsung phones which allows you to uh, tether a Samsung mobile phone running Windows Phone 7, but it's certainly not a feature that's been introduced by the platform. It's a hack for the phone itself, and I believe, unless I'm greatly mistaken, that it's one of these hacks that's used by engineers and developers. Uh, it's not something that the mainstream user will get out of the box when they buy it at the shop, and it's only on Samsung phones. But until I've challenged him on that, he wasn't going to be very forward with that information and uh, left it on on the basis that uh, the Windows Phone 7 does support uh, tethering. So it's quite an interesting little discussion. You can read that on my Twitter feed, and it's at the very end, it announces that he's a Windows Phone 7 developer. So I bring up the point, well, you can't really be impartial if you've got vested interest in more people using Windows Phone 7. If you develop software for it, they want people to buy. So you can read that yourself and have a little look. And uh, that was basically all the feedback I've got that I can mention in the show. So if you're more organised, I would have had some more things for you. But uh, next time around, we'll uh, we'll have a section on the feedback and we'll go through some of the things because we've had some quite interesting responses over the last week or so. And uh, like I say, I've been left to the devices for the last week. So I've had a, an opportunity to create all sorts of mayhem and uh, get all sorts of feedback that we can put onto the show. So that might be quite interesting for some of you. Um, Roy, have you got a track for us to uh, throw out the show on? Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't actually read the name of the uh, singer. So I'll just uh, I'll just write it somewhere in the show notes. I mean, structurally, I have to apologize because our shows are still a bit uh, improvised. Is the best word I can think of. We basically start a show. I don't even know what the first topic is. You just pass it to me, and I'm just looking around the screen. I'm like, oh, look at this. That'll be interesting. Uh, that's just the way we do the show, and I'm pretty surprised that people still like the show, and apparently we do find the. And stray with the uh, topics and things, and uh, and uh, and occasionally we have some guests too. I, I think it actually pays off to have more people on the show. It makes it more interesting from the point of view that people have a different flavor each time. They get to hear different points of view because they're used to they pretty much know which desktop environments we use and they know what preference for operating system. And maybe occasionally if they hear. A different person, it's useful, but that's the, the downside, probably from the listener's point of view, it's not a downside. It's not easy to organize these things because then you have to organize a uh, third wheel, so to speak. You have to arrange for a time that's convenient for another person, so, uh, and we have to have three people at the same time. So it's, it's always, be, even though like Richard Stallman is supposed to be on our show, we just haven't set a time yet because we, have to organize quite a few things, but uh, in the future, uh, hopefully in the near future, and perhaps we'll do a season two when we reach sometime in uh, October, the end of the first year, uh, we will uh, try to agree on a certain structure for the show, a certain set of rules, like we do news first, and then we do a discussion, then we do feedback, so if somebody doesn't want to listen to a discussion, just the news, they can listen to the first part of the show and uh, get the main uh, points of uh, uh, points of interest uh, at the start. So, um, yeah, that's that's about it for, for yeah. that. Well, on that note, and Roy's closing track, whatever that may be, um, thank you very much for listening, and uh, thank you for downloading and sticking with us. Um, if you do want an invite to Diaspora, please drop me a line. I've got uh, plenty of them, I believe. So uh, I'd love to see you on that particular social network. And it is, as I said earlier. So drop me a line if you would like an invite to Diaspora. And uh, thank you very much, Roy. It's a pleasure uh, getting back with you after a couple of weeks of uh, respite. And uh, we'll see you the others later on. Bye.